Good morning, everyone. All right, so we're going to start just in about uh, within the next minute. My name is Lucas Socio. I'll be presenting this webinar today about Google Ads and uh, the right ad types for your law firm. I'm going to post in the chat here to see if everyone can hear me in case you can't uh, you see in the text. Uh, Yo, can uh, please let me know if you guys can hear me. Um, I added a text there to you. If I get one yes, I will be satisfied. I haven't heard from anybody yet. All right, so it's gonna wait a few more seconds. All right, perfect. Thanks, Jacob. Jake, thanks, Mark. Uh, can you guys also see the the presentation I'm sharing here? You guys see my screen? I'm trying a different uh, format uh, for the presentation, so I just want to make sure you guys are seeing the the cover of the presentation the google ads google ads pick the right ad types for your firm i'm going to go ahead and assume that everybody can see it you bet thanks mark all right awesome so without further ado i'm going to get started um so for today uh just a couple housekeeping things uh this presentation should take about uh half an hour to 35 minutes uh based on my estimates there is a button on the top of your screen uh, on your browser. I think it's a, it's a yellow triangle. If for some reason uh, the presentation, the, the connection starts, starts lagging or you lose connection, you can press the button to reconnect uh, to the webinar. Otherwise, everything should go fairly smooth. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I will have about 10 to 15 minutes for, for questions. But if you have questions in the, in the meantime or during the presentation, feel free to add, add it to the chat. Uh, I have two people from Soul Pepper moderating the, the presentation, the webinar, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to give you the answer you're looking for. Otherwise, I will address it at the end of the, the presentation. All right, so just a, a quick agenda. So I'm briefly gonna go over who we are as a, as a Soul Pepper, as a marketing agency. I'm going to talk about the benefits of Google Ads, and then I'm going to dive in into the types of search ads. Um, so really briefly about Soap Pepper, uh, we're a digital marketing law firm uh, that we've been around for about seven years now. We specialize in online advertisement, SEO, which is uh, improving your organic presence, web design. And uh, we really pride ourselves on the strategic approach and the results-driven uh, campaigns we, we, we drive for, for our clients. Um, this is our team. Uh, it's a, a bunch of good-looking people that we have here, very smart, very talented. Uh, I'm on the top right or left. I'm not sure how the, the way it has been shown to you, but I'm Lucas here. Um, I've been around with Soap Pepper for about a year and a half now. But I have about 10 years of experience in, uh, in marketing. I've worked for magazines, newspapers in the past. Um, I work, I've been working like in marketing agencies for the last five years. Uh, so I've worked in-house and in agents. So I understand the, the point of view of clients and the point of view of agencies to make sure the results are being done and delivered uh, in a way that, that, that's meaningful to the business. And then the next slide here. So <clears throat> this presentation is uh, entirely about Google Ads. So I thought I would highlight our partnership that we have with Google. Uh, we are a, a premier partner with Google, which means that we have um, all of our staff uh, Google certified with the ads. We have access to the latest tools and resources they offer. Uh, so any beta program, any beta test, 
that's available, we have access first. So what that does, it allows us to put our clients a step ahead of competition that don't have that access. Uh, for us to retain the badge, this, this badge, the certification, we need to prove um, ongoing results on a monthly and quarterly and annual basis with Google. So we have our own dedicated Google, Google representative that reviews all of our account, accounts, the performance, um, the, the lifetime duration that we have with each client. So if you have clients that are contracting us for one to three months and canceling, that, that will reflect poorly on our badge and we will lose it. So the majority of our clients stay with us for, for a year plus because the results are, uh, are there. And that's something I want to highlight. And the next, the other one here, um, we are very happy and proud to have uh, a five-star rating on Google as well from previous and existing clients. And it's something we take it very seriously to make sure that our clients are benefiting from the work we do for them. Um, but, okay, so that's uh, a little bit about us, about myself. So let's get into the the most important part of the presentation. So why are Google Ads important for your business, for your business growth? So this is a, a question we get asked a lot, and it's, it's a very important one. Um, and the reason for that is that people use Google to look for services uh, and professionals that are, that, that, that they're, um, they're within their geographic, geographical area that they can, they, they can use. So people are actively searching on Google for services that you offer. Uh, Google Ads allow, allows you to target specific people in specific uh, geographic areas uh, that are good for your business. So let's say you're in Vancouver, uh, but you offer, you can practice in Burnaby as well because you have a, uh, another office location. So you can specifically target people near your office that will, that will be able to con contact your business by foot, or if you're able to target the whole province and, and service everybody, you can target that as well. So you can be very specific. Um, if your firm offers five different, different practices, if you offer uh, family law, um, real estate, wills and states, but um, family is the, the one that brings you the most uh, benefit and return, you can only target that one if that's what most important for your business. You can also schedule your ads to appear in specific times. You can have your ads to run on weekends only or during the week from nine to five. Uh, that way you know for every click you're paying for, if someone contacts you, you'll be there to answer the phone or reply back to them. So the other, the other reason Google Ads is so important is because ads come first. Google um, is a pay to play platform. So they're always gonna prioritize ads over organic results if you're looking for a service or a professional. So in this example that I have here, I took this screenshot not too long ago. I searched for best criminal lawyer in Vancouver. And you can see here, there's, there are three ads that show up on, the, on my screen above the fold and everything else is, are, is below the ads. So you can tell their ads because on the left side, they have a, they have a label called ad. It's, it's very subtle and often people miss it or a lot of people like based on my experience, uh, I would say 80% of uh, users that are looking for a service, even though they know ads will appear, they don't realize what they're clicking on. If they're clicking on a paid ad or an organ organic listing. Um, so what, what it does is just like, it makes a, a space that's more uh, advertisement driven. So the downside is that you have to pay to be on the top of the page, but on the, on, on the, on the plus side is that it allows you to compete um, head to head with anyone. So a sole practitioner can compete with a, lar with a larger law firm uh, if the practitioner has a better ad quality is optimize the, the ads accordingly. And as, as I know, like using all the, the tools that Google offers to schedule the ads, to show in a specific location. Um, and even if you're competing with one or two very large law firms, you still have like four spots. 
to show your ads and be able to drive people to your website uh, and try to convert them into into cases into into leads. So that's like the the main benefit of of Google for me. So before I continue here, I'm gonna throw in a quick poll. Um, I'm gonna end the poll we have right now, and I'm gonna see where is it. Reset that poll. Uh, let me know if you um, have used Google Ads for your practice before or not. I would love to see how many people have tried, or this might be the first time that you're giving it a go. Uh, from my experience, a lot of people have tried, but they um, they, they might have used uh, one ad type, the 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 smart campaign type, which is fully automated. You just add a a URL and Google does all the work for you. And it doesn't really give all the benefits that Google has to offer. So I see here, oh, thanks for you guys answering. Yeah, so the like from the the sample here, I have like two third two thirds of people have used and one third haven't. Uh, so this, this is great, great to see that some of you have and uh, others are still thinking about it. Let me continue here. So this is um, one of the main topics we discuss with our with our clients and people that, that have questions about Google Ads. It's what are the what are your business goals for your digital marketing efforts? So we know your business goals is to grow your, your practice, to have more cases, have more clients, have better cases, better quality clients coming in. Um, so before we get to that point, we need to see how are we going to measure the success of the campaigns? Are we driving phone calls? Are we driving form submissions? Um, <clears throat> we have some client. I have two clients. They're uh, criminal lawyers, and they far prefer receiving phone calls than form submissions because they know once they're on the phone with a the client, they're much more likely to retain them because they're there. It's easy to make a case, understand the needs, and explain how they can help them. But for other clients, um, I think for we have like one uh, personal injury and one family lawyer. They far prefer receiving form submissions because they can take it all in, uh, review their cases, and contact them back with uh, some context, and they find that to be more uh, helpful for the success rate when they're talking to clients. Right now, like there's not a lot of clients driving office visits, but that it is an option in Google Ads that you can try to promote your office location, your firm's location for people to come in in person to uh, talk to a, to a lawyer or just to schedule an appointment if it's easier for them. You can also drive uh, website traffic. Uh, we have, we've, I've seen clients that they are able to post a lot of content on their website on a weekly basis, really uh, thought leader and, um, and, and, and relevant content for the users on a, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. So their goal is to drive people to those uh, blog content, the, new, the news pages, because they know once people go there and see what they're publishing on a regular basis, once they contact them, they'll be much better qualified leads. So it's all about what you're looking for and what can help you uh, retain better clients and better cases for your practice. So with all that in mind here, um, I'm gonna go show what a setup looks like within Google Ads. So within Google Ads, once you create a new campaign, uh, they're gonna ask you the type of goal uh, you're looking for. So I crossed uh, three, three out here, like sales, uh, product and brand consideration, and app promotion. Those are mostly for uh, e-commerce stores or for you know, like apps, like games and, and, and things like that. So for a law firm, I would strongly suggest people to go with leads. Leads is probably the, the one that makes most sense. Um, and the last option here in gray, it's uh, to create a campaign without the goals guidance. Um, we usually use that option because once you select one of those goals, they will hide options that are relevant, relevant or part of the other, the other goals. 
But I think if you're doing setting up, setting this up on your own, I recommend using leads. And after you select this part, this um, this option, uh, Google's going to ask you to choose your campaign type. And now this is where the whole presentation is going to be about. Um, so the the context here is that once you select your campaign type, you have search, display, shopping ads, video, app, smart, and discovery ads. So I crossed out four different ones here. You don't need to do shopping, app. Uh, I don't really recommend smart uh, at this point or discovery. They're fully automated um, uh, ad types that Google controls. And you don't have a lot of option on how, uh, what kind of keywords you're, you're targeting uh, on your ad copy because Google is going to be pulling this automatically from your website. So it's, it's easy to set it up, but it, it doesn't give you a lot of control and options to optimize and improve the performance of your ads. Uh, so the, the main option here, I think, for law firms that I would recommend, that we recommend as, as, as an agency, is to do search. Uh, so search, when people are searching on Google, they're actively uh, looking for a service. So they're much more likely to contact uh, a law firm or to be better quality. Display, those are the image ads you see on, uh, on different websites like CBC or CNN. Um, we might be looking at the same article from CBC or, or, or from the New York Times, but we will see different advertisement based on our own demographic, on our, on our geographic locations. Um, so the ads are customized to the user. So that, that option is really good if you want to promote your firm and what you offer. You won't necessarily drive leads. It's more of a brand awareness. Uh, same for the video here. So the videos, it's for mostly for YouTube. So when people are on YouTube, they're watching, um, whatever they may be watching, they will be present, be presented, uh, advertisement at the end. In the, at the beginning and at the end of the of the videos, those are also more for brand awareness because people won't stop doing what they're doing on YouTube or other video channels to go to contact a lawyer. But you will help uh, increase your brand awareness and the likelihood of them to contact you when they need your help. So if someone sees your ad on uh, on the New York Times on on, on CBC. And then they see a video that you've done on, on YouTube while, while they're browsing there. When they search for a lawyer or for a service that you offer, they will recognize your brand and it'll be more likely to contact you. But there is a cost associated with it. So it requires a big, a bigger investment. That's why if you have a limited budget or depending on where you're targeting, uh, even if you don't have a limit, like a, a small budget, there, there might be enough search volume uh from high quality keywords for you to spend all your money on search only so the benefits of search like i've kind of covered covered some of them so far but just to recap uh now users rely on google to find information about professionals and services uh growing your, your organic presence does take a lot of time and effort and resources so if you want to rank um organically, you need to optimize your website. You need to be published content on a regular basis. You need to be driving links to your website. So there's a lot of work that's involved. And for you to start seeing some results, it takes in average about four to six months. Um, that doesn't mean you're gonna start getting leads from it. It's just really to grow your online presence. So the analogy I always like to make is that, um, um, SEO, the, the organic presence, is moving you from uh, a side street to the main street. So it takes time for, for, for you to get move your office to a new location and get people to come in. But the ads is like you're putting like billboards and flyers on the main street, guiding you people to go to your, to your office, which is on, just on the side street. So there's definitely benefits, like, short, like it's almost a shortcut to get in front of people and drive them to your, to your practice. Um, yeah, so for the search ads, I'm going to be talking about extended search ads, responsive search ads, call only ads, and ad extensions. 
those are types of search ads that we you can set up and we can use. And there are more types, but I just uh, I don't think I'll, I'll get to them today uh, because those are the, the ones we recommend for, for law, law firms. So the first one is the extended search ads. So these are the, the kind of the, the regular ads that you see and that I showed earlier. Uh, they have two or three headlines and two lines of description underneath the headlines. Uh, the benefit of, of them is that you have full control on the ad copy messaging. Whatever you put in the headline, that's what's going to appear for the user. Um, and you also have the ability to use longer headlines and description. One tip that I have for, for, for this one here is that when you set up this uh, ad type, Google is going to ask you to say, do you want to use search net, the search network and the display network? I would uncheck the display network box because all that does is going to create some uh, text ad, like some image ads from the text that you're using for the search ads and showing different websites. This is great to reach more people um, and get your and get your firm name in front of other users. But those users are not necessarily looking for your services or for your, or for something you offer. So that's why we only keep to the search network because those are the ads that come up when people actively search for a family lawyer in Mississauga, for a family lawyer in Burnaby, uh, for a divorce lawyer uh, in, in Toronto. Like any any search term that's relevant to you, that's when you, you wanted to show your ads. Display network is more based on their demographic um, and their online behavior. So it's more of a colder, colder leads in a way. So here's what the setup looks like for the extended search ads. So I don't know if it's too hard for you guys to see, but basically when you create the ads, Google's gonna ask you to add the URL, uh, where you want to send the, tra the traffic to. Uh, if it's the home page, you add the home page here. Or if you add in a specific uh, ad for family, for family law, it would be great if you have a family law dedicated page on your website to drive traffic to that page so it's more relevant to the user. So you, you enter your three headlines, your description lines here, and this is what the ad will look like on a mobile device. Um, it's, it's actually it's slightly different now. Uh, it's not green anymore. It's uh, black, but this is kind of the preview they they offer. The, the next ad type is the responsive search ads. So this is, in a way, it's very similar to the extended search ads. The main difference is that uh, Google Google allows you to enter like up to twelve different headlines and up to eight different descriptions. And uh, Google is going to choose the top, the ones they think uh, are the best for the specific search. So Google, Google's algorithm will optimize your ads based on performance. So if Google thinks someone is more likely to click on your ads, if you, if you say free 30 minute consultation, they're going to show that line. If they think they're more likely to click on, on your ads, if they if you if if they present serve in Vancouver since 2005, they're going to show that headline instead. Um, the tip that we have here is that you can actually pin specific headlines. So for your uh, law firm's name, you can pin it to be always on the first one, or always to be one of the two or one of the three. So that way, Google is not choosing three headlines that doesn't contain your firm's name. Um, it might be OK in certain cases not to show your firm's name. Um, but in general, it's nice to have your, your brand in front, uh, in front of the people searching for, for specific services. Um, so there's a lot of benefits in using responsive search ads. Um, the downside is that you don't have a lot of control of the ad copy that's being presented to the people. And that like like extended search ads, but it, it it does provide more options for Google to use the algorithm to help your business. Um, so oh yeah, so here is the call only ads. 
and that's li literally what it is. So this, these are ads. They're only meant for mobile devices or for any device that's, that's able to make a phone call. So you wouldn't necessarily appear on a tablet because you, you can make phone calls from a tablet uh, or from, from, a, a, from a laptop. Uh, it would be mostly for cell phones. And this is what the ad will look like. You would prioritize your phone number and try to drive more phone calls to your business. Um, we don't recommend this ad type for law firms that don't have some uh, like a dedicated receptionist to answer the phone calls. If if the majority of the phone calls go to um, voicemail, this might might not be the best way to spend your money. Maybe you you rather get people to submit a form to um, to on your website so you can get an email and reach back to, to user when you have when you have the chance. But the benefit of this one here is that. On mobile devices, call only ads you usually get a better priority. So you can outrank other users, other competitors by running call only ads on mobile devices. Um, and then the next part here is the ad extensions. So the ad extensions, there are additional things that come to the ads uh, on top of the headlines and the description that I showed uh, in the extended and the responsive search ads. So you can add uh, site links, uh, which is additional links to your website. And I'll show you an example in a second. You can add the address of your firm so people can see where you're located and look for directions. You can add a phone number as an extension. And you can add specific services you offer. There are more. There's like, there are a lot more different of, uh, types of ad extensions, but those are the more uh, relevant ones for law firms. Google always have the automated ad extensions and the, the, the dynamic site link extensions on. So I recommend turning them off. This is because uh, Google is going to go through your website and decide what links they want to present to people. And that's not always like the, the best approach because they might be getting like pages that not, doesn't, doesn't bring a lot of value to users or it's just going to take them away from... Um, from the page you, you want them to go to. Um, so the other benefit of site links is that you can get more real estate on the search results page. So I kind of, I, I, I looked this up yesterday actually for, for this screenshot. So I searched for Vancouver Family Lawyer and you can see here again, about like the, the search results page, they're all ads. You can see the label here. Um, so Google is considering this ad here to have better quality. So it's giving them more real estate. So you can see th those. This box here is the site, uh, the site, the site link, site link extensions. So on top of this, uh, the headline, people are presented more options to click on. So like to learn about our people, about us, uh, state litigation, and uh, more specific to family law. So instead of having one place to click, a user will have five places to click uh, and go to the same website. So this is super important to have. You can see the third one here. The space it takes on the on the website on the on the page is much smaller than the first one that have everything here. The second option here, the second one, they also have site links. So those links are site links as well. But Google decides when to show with a description or without a description. Uh, so it's always better to add all the extensions you can, and then Google may present that. So you can see here, this one has a, a call extensions. This one doesn't. Um, maybe the call extension for this one here is off because I was searching like late last night and they didn't have anyone to answer the phone. So they might be optimizing for with an ad schedule. But it's just for you guys to see what the ads look like. Um, let me see here. Oh, this is a, like a, another common question that we get very, very often. Uh, if you should run branded ads for, for your firm. So branded ads is basically anything that contains your firm's name. Let's say Soul Pepper was a law firm. So the name would be Soul Pepper uh, Law Firm or Soul Pepper Family Lawyers. Any search that contains Soul Pepper will be considered branded. So should I be paying? Should we be paying 
for clicks for people that are already looking for us? Um, in most cases, yes. If, if you have a competitor specifically targeting your, your company's name, their ads will come up above your organic results on, on Google. Or if your company includes like generic names like family law, so like soap pepper family law, if someone's bidding on family law keywords plus anything else, their ads would come up if, if you search, if someone searched for soap pepper family law. Uh, the benefit of running branded ads is that you'll be a lot less expensive for you than for a competitor. So our website, if, if you, our law firm was called Soap Pepper uh, Family Law, you'll be fully optimized for the word Soap Pepper. So our ad quality will be a lot higher than any competitor because they cannot use our firm's name on their, on their marketing. So Google's going to say, this one has much better quality because it matches what people are searching for. So we could be paying $1 per click for branded terms, while competitors might be paying $20, $25 per click. So in a lot of ways, like targeting competitors can be a waste of money if you're not doing it right. So I have an example here that I, I, I pulled yesterday as well. So I searched for this uh, uh, law firm here in Vancouver. Uh, I actually don't know who they are. I just Googled, this, Googled them as an example. Uh, Philco criminal lawyer. So you can see here that the first result on the search results page, it's someone else. It's Jonathan Israel's uh, experienced criminal lawyer. So look how much real estate they take on the search results page. And this is an ad. And then Philco comes underneath that. And that's always going to be the case. So if you have like two or three, four people bidding like uh, Jonathan is here, uh, Philco is going to be way down the page, even though people are searching for, for them. It's like one scenario that, that I've seen happen in the past is that uh, someone refers Philco to our friend and say, hey, I've worked with Philco in the past. You should look them up uh, and get a, like a free, a free consultation with them. So they come to Google, they search for Philco criminal lawyer, and they click on the first result without seeing who they are. And they get a free consultation with Jonathan Israel instead. The likelihood of them going back and trying to reach out to Philco like reduces drastically. So first impressions matter, and you want to be on the top of the page, especially for your own uh, uh, firm's name. So I recommend if you, if you guys are uh, after this this webinar, go on Google and search for a firm's name and see what comes up. Are you coming up organically? If not, you definitely should be doing some SEO work. Uh, if there are people bidding on your name you should consider doing ads to outrank them. So that's a, a way to protect your brand from, from competitors. Um, and just to wrap up here as well, so I have a few recommendations uh, and additional tips. Uh, so choosing the, the right ad type, it's like a super important step in making a, a successful ad campaign, but there are more things that come into it. So. One of them is to set up your Google My Business listing, which is free to do. Uh, and once you do, you need to connect it with Google Ads. So this is the only way you can have your location extensions connect to uh, your Google Ads. And just you're able to get more information of how people are finding you as well. Um, the second suggestion is a location targeting. Be specific. You know, if you're... If you work uh, in a few different cities, but one of the cities bringing you better business, just target that, that, that city instead. Uh, concentrate your budget on the best performing areas. Um, you can target uh, the locations based on, on postal codes, on neighborhoods. Um, I know from uh, like in Tor Toronto, Toronto, for example, it's, it's, it's a it's a big market. There are a lot of people there. So if you're in Mississauga, you don't necessarily need to advertise in Toronto because there, there are enough people in, in Mississauga. If you put a Mississauga, Mississauga and Brampton together, you have more people than we have here in Vancouver. So the, the, the amount of people searching for your services should be enough. And uh, it's likely that a competition in Brampton 
will be lower than in Toronto, for example. So you might have a, a better success rate in Brampton than in Toronto, just because of different markets. And the same applies for Vancouver here. So if you're serving like Vancouver, Burnaby, and Richmond, uh, likely the the competition in Richmond will be smaller than Vancouver. So you might as well just put your budget towards Richmond if there are enough search volume there for you. Um, the third the third recommendation is relevant keywords. This is this is crucial. So what kind of keywords are people uh, using to find your ads? Try to be as specific as possible. Within the Google Ads platform, there is an option for you to uh, do some keyword research and, and see what they recommend. Uh, so that's what it will look like. It's not very descriptive, this image, but you see it once you go into the platform. And uh, some, some examples of search terms you can be, you can be, you can be doing here. Uh, so I searched for family lawyers in Burnaby, which is a city just uh, next door to Vancouver. And those two ads came up. So I looked them up. None of them have, have uh, an office in, Vancouver, in, in Burnaby. So they're all like downtown Vancouver. So in a lot of ways, I would probably recommend them to um, put Burnaby as a negative keyword. So they're not paying to show up for people looking for a lawyer specifically in Burnaby. If they're looking for family lawyers, uh, family lawyers in the Vancouver area or in the Burnaby area, uh, like a little bit more wiggle room, uh, that would be okay. But it's unlikely that people will choose someone far from where they are, even though they're searching for the services you offer. So some of the examples that I have here, you can have, I uh, you know, family lawyers in Cole Harbor, which is a, is a neighborhood here, here in Vancouver, uh, real estate lawyers in Burnaby, you can have like real estate lawyers in Vancouver, in Richmond, in Mississauga, in Brampton. So just be a little more specific. They can help save your budget and target relevant keywords only that they may not be as competitive. Uh, and the last thing here is the landing page or the website. So once people click on your ads, where do they go? Do they go to your website? Um, and if so, like is your website optimized? Can people easily request a callback? Can they request a quote or schedule an appointment with you? Um, so you want to make this as easy as possible. And um, that will definitely increase, uh, improve your success uh, rate with the campaigns you're running. We often recommend creating separate pages, like landing pages for your ad campaigns. That, that's different from your website. So those landing pages, they're optimized for people to contact you and request a call back. And they easily describe everything you do. And they have your phone number in different places so people can, if they're on their mobile device, they can just click on the phone number and call you directly. Just making the, removing some of the barriers for, for people to, to reach out to your firm. Uh, and it's something that we, we learned from our partnership with Google here. So they share this with, this with, uh, us early in the year. Uh, so did you know that it takes in average seven interactions before a person takes a buying action on, on a website? So what that means is that people might visit your website several times, like three or four times. They might look you up on Facebook or social media. They're going to review. Uh, they're going to look up your online reviews before they contact you. So having your presence um, well optimized in different places, different platforms, and being in front of people when they're looking for you is crucial. Uh, and it's just like the, the last uh, recap here, you know, is our recommendation that the approach we do for our clients is to improve your online performance by thinking holistically. Everything matters from the campaign type you choose, the keywords, uh, the ad copy you put on, on, your, on your advertisement to the landing page, to the website. So you want people to have a, a good user experience, experience, low friction, uh, low barrier for them to contact you, for them to find the information they are looking for. And that's a wrap. So we have time for questions now. Um, this this uh, webinar, it was a little bit more technical uh, than what we do usually. But the goal here is for you to 
approach your online advertisement, uh, your Google ads by thinking holistically. You know, everything matters. Uh, this is kind of like a high level overview of the type of ads you can do to help your firm drive more qualified leads. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you if you've tried uh, Google ads before, did it work, did, it didn't work, and why you think that happened, or if you have any, any, any specific questions. I don't see any questions coming here, so I'll let you guys uh, think about that, and I'll, I'll, I'll stay here. And then if you guys don't have any questions right now, but you want to connect with someone from our team to uh, review some of the work that you've done and uh, do an assessment, there is an offer that we're doing here for a free 30-minute consultation with one of our account managers. Um, so feel free to book a time that suits you, that's, that works for, for you, and we'll... Uh, Talk about specific about your about your location. Uh, if you're in Brampton or Mississauga, Burnaby, uh, Saskatoon, Calgary, wherever you may be, like what would be the best approach? Um, so I have a question here from Mark. When should you go in house for the services or source out to other services such as as your agency? This is a really good question. I think um, it's all. It's all resource-based, I would say. Um, we, I, I, in a lot of ways, it, I, a lot of clients start off on their own. Um, a lot of law firms because they might be a smaller firm, they might not have a lot of money to to invest in this right now, and that's totally fair. But it's going to come a point that it's going to take time an effort for you to optimize and review your ads. So where is your time better spent? Is your time better spent with the optimize your ads or working with clients? Um, we, we, we always, as, as a reference here, like we always compare our service with uh, accountants and uh, even lawyers at the time. So you can do the accounting of your firm on your own. Uh, it's doable, but it might take a lot of time and effort and stress. And it might just be easier to outsource that to someone else and then let someone else handle that part of your job and give you the, the report, say, hey, this is how it's happening. This is how things are going. And, and uh, you can focus on what you do best. Um, I understand as, as a business owner, often people have to do wear many hats and they have to do different things. So my recommendation to come to an agency like, like ourselves is when you come to a point that um, you have enough clients to keep you busy, but you don't have time to bring, in, bring new clients in, that's the thing that would be the best time to reach out to an agency. Because then you can work with the clients and do what you do best and do what brings money to, to your firm uh, and let someone else do the marketing efforts for you. So for us, Everything we do is in a, it's a partnership with, the, with, with our clients. So we need to understand their goals, their objectives, and it needs to be working. Uh, a lot of, like for us, I can speak for ourselves. Um, it's a bit cliche what I'm going to say, but the client's success, it's, uh, it's our success. So we want to make sure it's, it's uh, beneficial for them. So if the... Um, uh, you retain a client at, a, let's say, $5,000, and it costs you $200 to bring them in, it's, it's worth it because that's a client that you wouldn't have otherwise because the marketing uh, brought them because they were looking for a service, not for you specifically. They weren't a referral. So that's kind of like the approach we, we, we take, and uh, we would definitely want to make sure it's useful for beneficial for the, for, for the firm. But it was a good question. Thank you. Any, any more questions, guys? Let's see here. We've got a, still got a, lots of people in the room, so I'll, I'll wait a little bit more, a couple more minutes. I think we, we just passed the 40-minute 40, 40 mark for 
our uh, webinar. So uh, yeah, you're welcome, Mark. Yeah, but honestly, I, I, I strongly recommend you guys to, uh, if you're at that point that you've been doing uh, Google Ads, you're not sure if they're performing well, or if you're not happy with the, with the return you're getting, do schedule a, a, a free consultation with us. Our team will be able to guide you and help you and, and see if there is something we can do to uh, take you a step further. Um, yeah, and, and if you've never done Google Ads before and you just don't, if this webinar didn't make it clear or it just made it more confusing, I'll also schedule a consultation. It will try to break things down and see what marketing approach your firm should take. All right, guys. Uh, so there's no more questions. I'm going to end today's webinar. It was a pleasure. I hope you guys uh, learned something from this and uh, it was, was valuable to you. This webinar is going to be saved and uh, we're going to email you guys afterwards a link to the webinar so you guys can go back and listen to it and uh, hear me talking again for another 40 minutes if you want. Or uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll welcome the opportunity to, to meet you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day and a wonderful weekend.